So we did a video on this before. So there we go, which pro is the fastest bike, why it's absolutely bollocks and why you shouldn't buy an aero bike, <laughs> um, why they're a complete waste of time, and why position means everything. Alright, so um, we'll watch a bit of the vid and I'll give my thoughts. You may have seen, if you've not seen it, go watch it now and then come back and watch this one. Um, but it was very popular and lots of you enjoyed it. It's very rigid in each one, so it's very, very controlled across all three yeah. positions. Alright, so let's so we'll skip along for a bit. Now. So they're using a power tap rear hub, yeah, power tap rear wheel in that. Uh, which is quite good, and then... Basically, they just do tests. I think it's 45 k's an hour, and they basically then can compute the CDA of it because they know the air pressure of the velodrome, and it's a pretty good way of calculating the CDA. And then from that, they then calculate the wattage savings. So they got like some Pinarellos, the Merida reactor, all this stuff. Um, so we'll go through this because this is this is alright. So we'll go on to the results, and this is basically why it's very interesting. So we go here, um, so you can see the CDA, so that's that's basically the coefficient of drag. And then you can see the watts at 45 k's an hour. Um, so let's say we go on to watts at 45. Or, yeah, so the, you can see the difference at 45 k's an hour is 20 watts between the Vias and the Merida Sculptura in the error position. Um, so that that's 20 watts, but then... In the straight arm hoods, it's 387 watts. So it's like, in reality, if you want to save 80 watts, don't go in the hoods with a straight arm at 45 k's an hour. Just get in an aero position. I mean, the savings are so minute. I mean, look at the difference between, like, the. I mean, the difference is so marginal that I don't really see the point of spending so much extra money on a bike that's slightly more aero. But then, unless you have the most aerodynamic position, which will save you 80 watts, then there's just no point buying an aero bike. They're just a bit of a gimmick. I, I think if you're a professional and you have an outrageously aero position, then yes, buy an aero bike. But if you're an average punter, it makes absolutely zero sense to concentrate on, oh yeah, but I can save like 20 watts at 45 k's an hour in a velodrome. Yeah, but how often do you spend at 45 k's an hour on the front probably in other race, not very often. If you're drafting, obviously it's less, and if you're going at less speed, then you're saving less watts. But if you really want to save the watts, then do some flexibility. Do some pre-activation exercises before you get on your bike. Do things which will actually make you more flexible and be a better athlete, so then you can get in a more aerodynamic position. You can get into the aero position on the Merida Sculptura, which is like 307 watts for 45 k's an hour. And instead of Instead of complaining that, oh yeah, I don't go very fast because I only have a Scott foil and that's slightly less aerodynamic um, than the Vias or whatever it is. I mean, it, it's just it's just pointless. Um, I, I don't really see, like, oh, I have a Vias, or oh, I'm point, point 0.7 watts slower at 45 k's an hour. Oh, that, that must be the reason I get dropped. It's like, no, if you get dropped on the flat, it's mainly because you can't push the watts in an aero position. So learn how to push the watts in the aero position and maybe consider an aero bike. But for me, I, I they're not as comfortable often. They also have stupid aero integrations, which makes it very hard to actually change like the bike bike position. So if you do want to slightly change your position, there's absolutely zero chance. So this old bloke's trying to sell you bikes, so he's like, oh yeah, it, it's, it's quite a big difference. Um, and then we'll pick up the other thing, like here saying about all the savings that you can save. I mean, 7 watts is so marginal. I mean, it's like... It, it just seems... It seems people concentrate so much on the smallest... The smallest 10% of mar of gains. But in reality, if people ate proper food, ate vegan diet, ate high carb, didn't have all the stupid whey shakes and all the rest of the fucking marketing bollocks that everyone gets told that they should have to improve their performance, and then they'd lose some weight... And then if they also just learnt to get a bit of flexible so they get an aerodynamic position, then, and actually trained properly, bought a power meter. Like, how many people have an aero bike and then don't have a power meter? It's like, you're trying to save watts, yet you don't even know how many watts you're doing. Like, that's just dumb. It makes no sense. So it's far better just to, like, focus on the 80%. Focus on what you can actually improve. Like, yeah, maybe buy some aero wheels if you think they're going to be cool. But... In reality, if you want to be a faster bike rider, 
is none of this marketing gimmicky stuff does it. The thing that does it is working hard consistently, eating good food, eating the right food that will fuel you, eating high-carb, low-fat, vegan. That is how you're going to do it. Not buying some zip HO8s because they'll be slightly more aero. It's like you you have a, like a thousand pounds to spend on wheels. You could either spend that thousand pounds on wheels, or you could go on a holiday somewhere where you'd be if you live somewhere bad for cycling, and then you could do far more training that week if you go on holiday in comparison to buying some stupid wheels that mean nothing. I mean, the, the other thing is like a bike fit, a skin suit. There are so many more things that are far more important than an aero bike. So, for, as a conclusion of this rant, just just if you're buying an aero bike, you have to realize that you're not going to go very much faster, and that your position is far far more important. Imagine if you did a four hour ride and you could just hold the aero position for four hours, you'd go infinitely faster than if you were just had an aero bike. So learn how to get in an aerodynamic position and hold that position for like four hours. Learn how to train properly, eat properly, and then. After that, you'll probably see some aero gains on your little aero bike and get a power meter. Otherwise, you're wasting all of your money. Uh, yeah, you might want a nice bike, but for me, it seems dumb to buy a nice bike when you can just f and then expect to go fast. When in reality, if you want to go fast, all you have to do is just follow the basics I've set up before and you will go far faster than an aero bike could ever deliver you.